Two-time NBA champion, okay. three-time NBA all-star, one of the bad boys himself, Mark Aguirre. Mark, welcome Mark. to the Odd Couple. <laughs> What's, What's up, up, man? Mark? How you doing? We good, How are man. You? <laughs> good to Thank see you, man. You up yeah. there doing your quarantining, man? <laughs> yes, oh, I'm yeah. in Jersey. Rob's in L.A. Yep. Oh, so, Rob. Y'all doing pretty good out there. Okay. Oh, and yeah. I know you remember oh, you know Rob it. from Detroit. He That's was that right. tall, from handsome Florida. handsome guy. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't know about all that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it after we talked about it. I was like, okay, I got it. I got it. Right. How you doing, man? Doing we are great, good, man. man. We are good. We are good. Excited to have you on. So, obviously, we'll get to the last dance. But I, I've always, and we've talked about this, Rob and I, at times, Um. You, I've said, when you're a star and a superstar, you want to be a superstar, you know? And that's what you were in Dallas. I mean, I don't know if people understand, you you averaged 29 points one year. You were averaging 26 points a game. Not on bad teams, but your last year in Dallas, you guys took the the Showtime Lakers to seven games in the conference final. So... Detroit took them to the conference finals. Yeah, we were right there with Detroit. Yeah, Right. And so when you got traded to Detroit and then, you know, your scoring went down, your shot attempts went down, so you took on more of a role rather than being, you know, the star and leading scorer and all that. Was that difficult to go from being, you know, the superstar (laughs) with the big numbers to, you know, a guy that's putting up, you know, 15 points a game? I don't know of many people that could possibly do that. And you and I say that and it kinda of probably just blow over anybody's head, but uh I don't know how you do that. You know, and that was don't it wasn't like Kevin Durant where when right. you went in yeah, when you went in your scoring was still just do what you do <laughs> and that's gonna have us win. You know, he didn't have to change a thing. You know, so uh right. when I uh but going to Detroit, uh it was totally different, you know. You know, because I, uh, they, they formula for winning was already set and, uh, it was built around Isaiah and Joe. And I knew that, you know, so basically, you know, I kind of knew what I was going into. The hard part was, you know, swallowing that pin when you had somebody guarding you that you know you can get 40 to. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. I mean, (laughs) how much did it help? I mean, I know you and Isaiah were tight, both from Chicago. So, that probably did that make it a little easier? No, it actually made it harder. Really? Wow. You know, yeah, yeah, it made it harder because see, you know, the thing that I want to do is, um, you know, let everybody understand first that I'm a ball player. You know, forget all the political things that are rumored and things are going on around it. You know, I'm committed to helping Detroit Pistons win. So that was my focus, and it's hard to you know, capture a, a city and let them know what you're really trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so um, that wasn't easy. And, you know, I didn't want it on Isaiah's head. This is my boy. Look, don't help me. Stay away from me. I don't need you making no comments about me. Right. I want them to know me as who I am. This is who I am. So, you know, now you stay out of it. So no heat comes on you. So, you yeah, know, I, it, it was, yeah, I don't want no heat on him. So you that was to- hard. It was very hard. Speaking of heat on Isaiah, you know, with the last dance and the whole Jordan thing, Isaiah's been beat around like a pinata from a lot of people about it. Michael Jordan still seems as angry today as he was 30 years ago. When you saw, like, Michael, J- Michael Jordan's reaction about towards, towards Isaiah, are you surprised that it's still that deep or it's still an issue? What do you make of, of Jordan's uh, – behavior towards Isaiah in this? Um, I kind of put it like this. Uh, you admit, I, I enjoy the fact that I played in an incredible era with incredible basketball players at an incredible time. That's like embedded in every one of us. And to me, for Isaiah and for Jordan, it's good theater. But what I'm saying is, is that, um, We've all done things and made mistakes and things like that. And to you as a warrior with me, Jordan, you know, Elijah Wan, Patrick Ewing, and all, it doesn't matter is that I competed with you at a high level, but you know my love was for the game, and you know I don't hate you. But we did some ugly things to each other, some real mm-hmm. ugly things. So 
Um, you know, I think at this age, personally, um, it was a mistake. You know, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't. Now, did you shake that, hands, Mark? Cause I know some of the Pistons well, shook hands. I can, like? yeah, well, no, I didn't shake hands going out the door. I shook hands as I knew we were getting ready to lose. Okay. You know, I was I was one of the last guys out there. You know, you kind of know what's getting ready to go on, and I just I didn't take hand with all of them. I looked across the uh, the uh, free throw line and say, "Hey, good luck in the next series." That's what I said. Right. Okay. So I hope they all heard it. That was for everybody. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> right. You I'm you gone. weren't yeah. one walking by their bench. That's the bottom line. Right. Yeah. I walking think out I was. By their bench. I don't oh, know if okay. I did or not. I don't know, man. I didn't. I mean, I I think I could care less about that. Shake hands, no shake hands. You know, you know me. You know my heart. You know what I, I deal for. I don't wish you no bad luck. You know, so to show the audience, I got to shake your hands. You know, you know I don't wish bad luck on you. You know, you know me as a person. Yeah, you know me as a person. So you know, let's not take this moment and overblow it. You now, know? but it's, it's good theater, though. You know. Yeah, a big thing as well, of course, was Isaiah being left off that dream team, which we know he should have made that. Which is one of the biggest travesties in sports. Yeah, did, well, did you? Did, oh, go did ahead. Anybody bro. tell him the truth? I haven't been keeping up. No, we the need the truth, truth from Mark Aguirre. Tell us I the truth. I don't know the truth. I'm gonna tell you what I see. <laughs> what do you know? You, you, you and Isaiah, you know hold what on, happened. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's take everything out of it, and then we can answer this question. Isaiah and Jordan, with no problem, never a problem. Who's on that team? Oh, Isaiah's on that team. Okay, well, that's the no question. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's right. like, uh, right. you know, I understood that, you know, and I understand that the entire NBA, NBA has this political side, and sometimes it's, you know, for good reasons, and, you know, you have to do what you got to do. Well, but uh, we, we tend to want to hide the political process of the NBA, but, you know, it is what it is, and you have to accept it sometimes. You know, that politically, that's what went on and you have to deal with it. You know? Mark, but, but Mark, did you, on, did Chris, you let me think, just let me just add this one part. We'll go quick. You know, Jack McCloskey was your general manager and he right. resigned over the idea that Isaiah wasn't going to be on the team, right? He he quit the the dream team. Uh, right. Chuck Daly was the coach. He decided to coach and didn't fight for Isaiah to be on the team or or walk away from the whole thing. When you look at that and you have a coach and a general manager and you have a star player who deserves to be on the team, I mean, do you have respect for Jack McCloskey? Do you look a different way at Chuck Daly for doing what he no. did? How do how do you how can you rec- reconcile when you have two guys from the same organization doing two different things? What I saw was was the fact that nothing can penetrate the loyalty that we have as Pistons. I don't care what my Piston buddy does who he is and what direction that he takes. I know that when it comes down to it, that not at a basketball game or making the Olympic team, but I know when it comes down to it, not being in a political position where, you know, I want you to get hurt. I do not want you to get hurt. And I can understand for Chuck Daly, you know, fighting for Isaiah getting hurt. And I can understand Doc Doc McCoskey's position because he, that's the way he is. You're like, screw it. You know, so they all are for me, if you understand that. Do you understand it? I know they're for me. So whether you root for me or whether you don't root for me, you're part of the piston blood, and that blood don't end. Believe me, brother, it, it doesn't end. You know, So I, I don't see what Chuck did as being anything against Isaiah. Matter of fact, you still represent the Pistons. You're the best coach in the NBA. You're coaching the Dream Team. You still represent the Pistons. So, you know, what does it mean? You know? Right. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I do. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Mark, yeah. man, great stuff. We we appreciate the time. I wish we had longer. But, no, uh, you're good, man. On. It's good to hear from you, man. It's yeah. You. I'll yeah. be reaching out to you again. Yes. We'll, we'll get you on again. <laughs> Thanks so hey, much. man, much success to you guys, man. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All yeah. right, Mark. All right. Peace. All right. Let's get right to it. It is time for Trash Talk. Don't you ever talk about me? It's, it's Trash Talking Tuesday. It's your teeth, Reggie. I don't know whether to smile at you or kick a field goal, man. All right, you ready? Let's jump into it, Chris. Let's do it. 
Terrence in Washington, you're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Who you trashing? Oh, I'm trashing Chris and Rob Parker. Chris, you made that bogus list last week comparing Reggie Miller to Clay Thompson. Those Indiana teams took to Jordan Bulls the seven games. Oh, with Mark Jackson. Let's oh let me think about it. Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. But Steph Curry's on a different universe than Mark Jackson and Rob Parker. You make me sick. You're the worst of the worst. You're talking about Oh, you love the Jordan documentary series. Oh, you love it. You cursed it. You hated LeBron's uh, tough, uh, tough shop. And you hated him cursed it. It's bad for kids, bad for family. Stop it. You're disgusting. You guys are gross. I love you guys. You guys are my favorite. And Rob Parker, you look like Ben Rames if he zipped down his skin and there was a skinny, sickly guy, man. I love you, dude. I'm out. <laughs> Wow. wow. <laughs> that was a rattle. <laughs> I know. Zach uh, in Orlando. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Who you trashing, Zach? I'm trash talking both of you guys for that garbage Draymond Green take last week when he said him and Steph Curry changed the game of basketball. First off, I don't think you guys listened to the whole podcast because all you did is cry and complain for 20 minutes. And I wish there was a real journalist interviewing him. They would have asked him why he changed the game when he clearly <laughs> elaborated on what he meant. He said, I believe I'm the best screen setter in the history of the game, and I participated in making the game positionless. He's a 6'6 guy that could play and guard any position on the court except for maybe the two. And now guys that can't guard can barely get on the floor. Whether you guys believe it or not, this Warriors run did not begin until Draymond Green became the starter. Not when Clay or Steph took off. Not when they traded Monte Ellis. Dre became the starter, and the Warriors have not missed an NBA final since. And every team in the league has adjusted. That was a horrible, horrible take by you guys. Rob, I've come to expect things like this from you, Chris. I'm highly, highly disappointed in you, brother. <laughs> Hey, hey, Zach, is this uh, this got to be a Draymond's cousin? This is Draymond's cousin. He's the best. He's the best screen setter in the history right, of the NBA. Right. Screen all, setter. Even, even if he were, that don't change the game. I'm right? sorry. The best screen setter. Setter. Unbelievable. Mike in Miami. You're on the I couple. Fox Sports Radio. Who you trashing? I want to trash both you two guys. Even oh my I god. Love, <laughs> even though I love listening to your show, but I. I'm just so sick of you guys uh, just hands down giving Jordan uh, the greatest of all time. The, the, the market called in. He hit a lot of it on the nail. Kareem had a, he had easily a more accomplished overall career. High school, college, it's not even close. But even in the pros, when you break it down, the guy played 19 seasons. You guys want to nitpick that the last two years he wasn't that great. The guy went to 10 finals. 10 finals. He took an expansion team, the Milwaukee Bucks, in his second year, and they went to the, they won the finals in his second year. The guy didn't go up against scrub players. He went up against the greatest centers the game basically have ever seen. Wilt Chamberlain, Willis Reed, uh, Nate Thurman. When he was 38 years old, he was he, I loved Olajuwon. He was awesome. But did you ever watch him go head to head with Olajuwon? I mean, he was he was eating him up too. The guy was unbelievable. Sure, the game has changed. It was more center dominant back then. But I mean, you got to hand it to the guy. I mean, you guys right. just want to. You guys just want to say all he did was well. He had Magic Johnson, and he had these other. <laughs> Michael Michael Jordan didn't win anything until he got Scottie Pippen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Scottie Pippen's won how many Finals MVPs? I'll wait. Right. For the record, Thanks, Mike. I, I got, I got, and I, you might too, Rob. I got Kareem number three. It ain't like we He's in our top five. We right. both have him. We're not right. poo-pooing his career. Stop it. All right, what about uh, Lewis? And he's probably trashing us. Right, Lewis in L.A. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Who are you trashing? Yeah, I'm trashing all these LeBron James fans that have the audacity to take somebody with a 367 win percentage in his NBA Finals games he's played a total of 49 games only jerry west bill russell and i think uh it's jerry west and bill russell and uh i think kareem yeah, have more games uh, no no there's only three guys that have more games in the finals and all of them have winning records and all of them are above uh 500 in, the, in their in their winnings but michael is undefeated he had what 35 games of his own i think and he has the highest win percentage outside of Tim Duncan and Bill Russell and right. Kobe. Those are the four highest win percentages in NBA Finals history. No doubt. How about Good Felicia call. in Michigan? You're on uh -oh. the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. Who you trashing? Hey, y'all. <laughs> How you doing? What's up, Felicia? Oh, my I gosh. Thank you. 
Hi, you so Felicia. Much. You know what? You know what? I, I just got to let you know. Um, no, you got to trash. So you got to trash something. Yes, who you trash? You, Come on, we run it out of time. Here. It's trash talk. Okay, okay, here you go. Here you go. If I was the Pope, he would be excommunicated. If I was the police, he, I would read him from his Miranda rights because he has the right to remain silent. This goes to Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Just to name a few, Sean Kemp, Alonzo Mourning, Ewan Bird, Barkley, Hakeem, Robinson, Kareem, M- Michael Jordan, Pippen, Shaq, Kobe, Drexler, just to name a few that Dennis Rodman has guarded. So if he says he can guard yeah. LeBron James, he can guard the King Millennial. <sighs> All, All right. right. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Appreciate it. Do we have time? Yeah, we got more no, time. How about minute, Joseph? Yeah. No? Hey, John, you Joseph got like 20 seconds. You got 20 Joseph. seconds. Got you, fellas. Fellas, look, Jordan is not the GOAT. I'm sorry, fellas, but you're prisoners of the moment. It should be called the last chance, the last chance to submit his legacy as the greatest. There's no reason why he just is, uh, decided to do this documentary in 2016. It's because LeBron's legacy is going to overshadow his at the end of the day. Y'all have a good one. How? All right, Joseph. How? I don't, I don't know how. LeBron's Man, lost we already. We love LeBron, but How? LeBron's already lost he better uh, come, more he better championships. Be, he better be other starting a three-peat. LeBron uh, James. MVP in the league. Come on, stop it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs>